It is a very special edition of the KSO Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We are inside of the Veneer Football Complex with Derek Young, a couple guys named Taylor Bratt, Hank Jacobs, who will be able to fill us in so much on uh, today's recruiting class. The early signing period does uh, not really kick off today, but the signing class is today. Appreciate you guys' time very, very much. Know you're busy. Thank you for coming on. Go Cats. We're excited to be a part of it. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, Derek, I'm going to let you handle this because anything I say is just stealing your information. So we'll just have a conversation here. I might check in once in a while, ask a question. But Derek, take over. Talk about this K-State recruiting class. Obviously, a, a bulk of the class was on the offensive and, and defensive lines and had a lot of junior college help in that way. Was that always the plan? Do you feel like you needed to address those voids? Yeah, I felt like with as many kids that graduated in each of those positions, that was a position. That was what we really had to do was try to build more depth and just make sure we had some things covered in the future and next season. You know, and while we're building this thing, and you know, when you graduate, I don't know how many seniors. I think twenty-seven seniors. You got to go that route to make sure you're covering and taking care of and patching spots. Yeah, I just think, you know, it all starts up front with our offense and defense. And uh, it, it's important to address those positions and be and be experienced at those positions and uh, find some ass kickers out there. So. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, with the JUCO guys, I know a lot of times they're brought in to compete right away. That's pro- I'm guessing that's the premise with the ones that you've added. Yeah, I think, and you know, like a DB to bring a guy in with some length, even with the high school guys that we brought in have some length, uh, and bringing in, I mean, it's going to hard, be hard to replace Trey. And as much as we rotate D linemen out, we need uh, an upperclassman to help out and those things too. So. Yeah, and is Justin Gardner as tall as he looks on film? He looks huge. Yeah, I think he's taller than what Ryan Lackey put in this <laughs> <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> what, where I, Ryan, what do you have down here? Six, he's probably six feet tall. Six, six two. I mean, he was as tall as I was. I'm about six three. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's probably about six two, but he he is long. He's got long arms. He's he's rangy, makes a ton of plays. Uh, Coach Rhodes helped us big time out on that one and. I think he has a, has a chance to, and with the, to playing be a pretty the good Big player. 12, I mean, we're facing these wideouts yeah. that are yeah. tall and long and look like yeah. Sebastian Taylor and Malik, so we got to have these corners to be able to protect against that. Mm-hmm. Then, be disruptive at the LOS and get their hands on. Of course, and then Derek Newton, obviously, former Cat, back in the fold now. Uh, I guess he didn't really announce until yesterday his commitment, but it, was it as quick and easy and wrapped up as it seemed to be? Yeah, I thought he was pretty much done from the start. I mean, he was he wanted to come back. He really did a good job while he was here building relationships with the guys. The guys really liked Derek. Uh, and I think it was a good time for him to go off and mature a little bit and come back. I mean, he's, he's a competitor. You know, I mean, he likes to win. And, I mean, everything he does, I mean, he wants to be the best football player he can be. And yeah. so we'll just – it helps that he's violent yep. and explosive and all Uses those other hands, yep. intangibles. And he's tough. So. All right, we'll flip the page a little bit. Uh, one of the, the last guys, I think, at least to commit, and was a little bit of a surprise at least, or maybe he led me on. He said he wasn't going to sign today. He did. It was Amaris Brown, the corner out of the Tampa area. Is that something that kind of came together in the last 24 hours, or was that kind of known? Yeah, it was something we kind of put together towards the end. You know, uh, I think he's, he's probably he's, more of a safety. Yeah, he's more of a free safety. Okay. Um, yeah. we, we've, you know, tracked Amaris this whole time and just kind of stayed in touch. And um, things change all the time in recruiting. And uh, we really liked Amaris when he was here. We just couldn't have an answer for him at that moment. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that he decided to, to be a Wildcat, and we're really excited about Amaris. Yeah, so, and he's from a – a great high school program. We've we've majored a little bit in that Tampa area, um, you know, at the at the previous school, and uh, Armwood's a fantastic football program. You know, they got dudes every year. I think they got the number five or number six wide receiver in the country next year, um, and gonna try to get that pipeline going even more. So, and we had a pretty successful kid from Tampa last year. I don't know if you guys know his name, Josh Youngblood. So mm, played uh, some late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. We're pretty excited about him. So. Uh, Amar's good football player, so yeah, and wants to be a Wildcat, yeah. so that matters too. I have a couple maybe big picture questions I want to ask, and Derek can get back. I'm curious about the specifics too that he's asking about. But for Mr. Jacobs, first, I'm more of a formal guy. I'll call him Taylor, I guess. But you know, obviously, you guys have you a can call of- me the Big Tuna if you want to. <laughs> oh, oh, big cat. Tuna, please. Uh, 
I am well aware that football is football, and you guys have had a lot of success transitioning from where you were to K-State now. I'm curious how difficult was it, if at all, to build a recruiting board, you know, adding, what was it, 20, 22, 23 more scholarships at this level in FCS. Was that tough for you? What kind of conversation was that with Taylor here and the whole staff deciding how are you going to take numbers, you know, at a different level of football? Um, you just try to learn it the best you can. Um, you know, at the FCS level, we can give partials. Um, we can split up a scholarship yeah. as many ways as possible. Um, we're still at 85 scholarships there, so um, it's pretty similar. Um, you just got to kind of, you know, slot scholarships where they're available. You want to, you know, we got we had to build a little bit of tight end here um, as far yeah. as scholarships goes. We had to um, rehab the running back room a little bit um, and just, just kind of build from there. We're pretty healthy right now, um, so it's, it's, it's an exciting time. So. And Taylor, I know every staff does things differently, so this isn't to you know uh, criticize any previous staff, but what's the thing or two that they've done differently that you've either really liked or was surprising to you or you just never even thought of before that these guys, since they've come here, have talked to you about? Um, the energy, the help, I mean, all those things are great. Uh, I mean, it's just you learn something new, everybody. I mean, every person, it's just like every family of a recruit that steps in the building. You're going to learn something from somebody. Yeah. And just learning to work together and how we did it and – everybody's in and I mean we're all grinding to recruit and I mean it's just been a it's been exciting and they're they're hungry and the energy's new so I mean it's a whole different deal and at this level they're going to get it, go get it yeah I just Taylor Brad I mean none of it would be possible without him he's a he's yeah. a killer in recruiting he talks to these kids every day as he gets to know their family <laughs> um Humble. He's, he's hun- <laughs> cats. That's not the word I was thinking of. But no, he he's a pretty special recruiter, and uh, he loves to say to Kansas, he wants to focus on those guys first, just like we do, and uh, we have a great time with it. I think. Yeah. I think most days it's a really fun time. I come in here. At- Taylor loves recruiting, so <laughs> yeah. and I love recruiting, yes. so we it kinda, works well. We work well together in that capacity. So yep. one player I want to ask about, then I'll let Derek, you know, get back to it. Is, is Nate Matlack? You know, the first commit in this class. I know you guys always had a lot of faith in this program, rightfully so. But uh, I, I guess I was impressed with that kid being the first one when he had other options, you know, to commit to you guys and to take that opportunity when some other kids hadn't jumped to that just yet. How important was he to start it off for you? He was huge because you you were we were just looking for that guy that could just fire it up. Yeah. And even his dad was shocked when he did it because I don't think dad was expecting it. We were downstairs uh, walking out of practice and he came over to me as we're walking out and he goes, hey, I, I want to talk to coach. And here I go. I was like trying to walk off like. And then I turned the corner and I was like dead sprint. Yeah. Like, gosh, let's go. It's go time. He's, it's going to happen. It's right. going to happen. And his dad at practice like, I don't think he's going to pop yet, you know, but <laughs> we want him here, you know, and all this. And it's like, okay. And then I brought coach out there and he committed and that was definitely exciting. And, you know, he's done a good job being a part of this and head leading it. And uh, I'm, it's, I'm glad to have him part of this. His so. mom's an alum, right? Yeah, both, both his mom and dad. Uh, are so that that even makes it better. I mean, he was getting some heavy interest too yeah. from Notre Dame, UCLA towards the end. You know, he wasn't really tweeting. He he said he wasn't going to tweet about anybody else. He said nobody else needs to know. He goes, I'm a cat. And I yeah. said, well, that's awesome. Yeah. So you know, TCU that's that. What's that? TCU is down his throat too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he's long. I mean, he's a long athlete. Yeah, so special athlete mm-hmm. from from KCK got to take care of that area first. Yep. So he's going to be special, no doubt. Sticking with kind of in-state linemen, uh, one guy. He's listed as an athlete. It's Taylor Warner. Uh, was a camp offer for you guys, obviously. Is it going to be a pretty big fight in terms of what side he's going to play on? You know, that's probably the million dollar question. I know Coach Riley's going to say O line. Yeah, I played I think, offensive line in college, too. I so think I uh, Coach Tui is secretly like, trying to recruit him <laughs> to the D line, you know? Like, I've been saying tackle. So, so uh, he, we thought last night in the basement about it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's causing a lot of issues in a lot of households so, throughout yeah. the state of Kansas yeah. and with K State fans. So, I'm interested to see how it goes, too. Yeah, he's he, he'll make an impact wherever he plays, but he has a chance to be pretty special. So, thank you. Cody Steph will be another one that could probably play both sides? I think so. It'll be interesting to see what he grows into. I mean, he's a big kid. What was he, the 3A defensive player of the year, um, all those things. I mean, they had a great – They McPherson had a heck of a season this year. Um, you know, he had Colorado and Vatek and, you know. Wisconsin, Tim, maybe. Yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah. You can't lose on those kids, you know. I mean, as we did with the ability we had to start, because last year, you know, we, we got to start this time on that mm-hmm. underclassman. 
or on those kids. So with that much time, I thought we did an awesome job. He performed well at camp and did all those things. And even though he had those offers, he still came to camp yeah. and showed us that, you know, that shows a lot of things. I want to be a Wildcat. It shows what they can do. Uh, and that right there is, a, I mean, that, he came to every game. Yep. Every home yeah. game, yeah. Cody came that to every is, home game. That's true. And that's awesome. I mean, that just shows you right there that his desire when he's here is going to be high. Yeah, and we, so, need, we need more kids like that in the program. Uh, just K-Staters, yep. hardworking kids from small towns that, you know, love to be at K-State. Yep, so. it means something to them. Mm-hmm. The next question, it doesn't have to be a recruitment. It kind of came down to the wire in terms of uh, the timing of it. But what was like the most contentious recruiting battle that you guys had where it was really back and forth that you weren't sure you were going to get? I mean, T. Denson for me, I mean, it was, I mean, I wasn't sleeping very well, really. I was like, gosh, man, what's it going to be? You know, I'm hitting this up, hitting that up. We're talking about it every day. You know, the highs and lows of recruiting is what I would say. I thought Jay Harris a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, Jay yeah. Harris in the beginning. State and- I'm just everything that's new or the closest <laughs> to my mind, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. T might've known longer than you guys did. What he was uh, You know, and he kept hitting to me like, it's going to happen coach. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I need to see it. To believe it. Okay. Show me. T, T had a lot of other things on his mind as well. I mean, they played for yeah. the state championship yeah. that Saturday and, mm-hmm. and I'm, He's that type of kid where he's going to focus on that first and take care of the other stuff later. It's kind of wild, right? That's kind of what the early signing periods cause, where he has to take a midweek visit while he's on his yeah, I mean, run. And he did. I mean, he made us our fi- his fifth visit. I mean, I don't know when the last time it is we got a kid that visited five of the schools prior to us, and we still got him. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and and that yeah, was, we crushed it that weekend. We crushed it. I mean, Taylor did. No, we had a good time. Yeah. We had a real good time. Uh, <laughs> I got to tweet out a picture here later of us. But uh, the barbershop photo went viral. It was pretty yeah. sweet. It was pretty there's, sweet. There's an even better one out there. So. <laughs> oh. It's not out there yet. Dude. Put it out there. And then uh, I guess that kind of a spinoff of that, was there any recruitment you won where you definitely thought you guys were out of it or just didn't think you were going to get uh, Surprise. Whit Mitchum last night was a little bit of a surprise, honestly. Yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> so did I. And Coach Riley called me Coach at like 11 p.m. last night, and he was working it and working the phones. And um, the threat was him. Jay Harris. Honestly, I go back to Jay Harris all the time, mm-hmm. but he was a little bit surprising in the beginning there. Um, just let me look through the list here. Right. And with, with Mitch, um, the threat was him possibly waiting until February and other mm-hmm. suitors becoming involved. No doubt, because that's mm-hmm. what you're. I mean, with the way he looked and his frame and all that, and he waits. It's you know you've already had your visit. You know, all that kind of stuff. It's all or nothing. And you guys have him listed at 265, so he's even at him weight recently. Too. Yeah, he yeah. on his visit, he said he was 210 last year. So <laughs> this time he's put on, what, 55 pounds? So I, I got to ask. I know it's kind of cliche at this point, but you go down that list, you look at you know next year's kids, that kind of stuff. Everybody is 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", Lyman are all 6'5", 6'6". You guys talked about length as soon as you got here. But, I mean, how much of that is a factor? I mean, when you go to look at a kid, is that one of the first things you say? Is his, is he long enough, or how, how important is that to you Length guys? is huge. I mean, it, it really is. And this staff and and Hank will always say, I mean, we got to get them, and then we'll fill them out. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get them tall ones, yeah, and we'll fill them out. Them. I mean, it's our job to, to make them great football players when they get here. Um, and it makes it easier when they're long and they're strong. And, um, you know, they have those – the things you can't coach, yeah. which is one of those is length and, and girth and size. So, how, how much, if at all, did you notice the way recruits responded to you change, you know, from the first month or two that coach was here to the Oklahoma win to now? Did you feel it change over that time frame? I mean, winning is recruiting, yeah. right? I mean, every time you win and the more you win, the better it just goes. It kind of takes care of itself. I mean, and so when we were, when that one, we were starting to pull away. I mean, that yeah. was. And that's a that's kind of a game. It's scary, you yeah, know. Yeah. You have kids at it because yeah, you know it could go. It still comes down to I mean, the more time you can get to know these kids and get to no know question. their families, you just got to be able to sell your program and sell sell what you have to offer. And I think we have really good people here. We have great facilities, and winning is part of the equation. But it's still about building. And Coach Klein says all the time. It probably sounds like a broken record to you, but it's about building relationships yeah. and recruiting. Without a doubt, we got one of the best in the business to do that. So, to you, with uh, Will <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> with Will Howard, Christian Moore, uh, Harris Triplett, and Demarcus Hayes, they were uh, early official visits. Is that something 
that was as so beneficial to you that you're continue or ratchet it up or is it well, how do you approach that going I th- forward i think we go back and forth on it honestly um obviously i think most of the guys that we did visit early we got probably 70 percent of those kids i believe mm-hmm. i haven't looked at the numbers yet but um it's it's great to sell our, our game day environment on saturdays and that's what we kind of aim for is we try to get into the season before we're going to official visit them or do it in December. Mm-hmm. Um, well, perhaps a good one because yeah, there's stuff prep. going on. Yeah. You know, we got practice. We got that yeah. kind of stuff. Now, it's, the summer in Manhattan is beautiful, but it's, it's better to get them here for game days, I mm-hmm. think. But if you got to get them here and they're committing at a certain time, you got to get them here. Yep. So. That's how it goes. Six of the commits were camp offers. You would probably want to make that a valuable asset going forward still i know every I school uses that but when you have six of the commits that were offered a camp i think that kind of puts more validation on it yeah i mean camp's always going to be a huge and important time to evaluate kids and you know what you get see i mean close. exactly it's you know first what you part. get you get to see how they're coached how they take coaching um all those things you know what's their how do they carry themselves between drills what all do they do i mean how passionate are they how tough are they i mean because this year was the first year we've ever that i've ever been a part of it where we did helms and shoulder pads you know and that was awesome mm-hmm. i mean you really got a great evaluation over yeah. over guys you don't play football on i mean we can even go back prior i mean dalton stuff, reisner was the camp guy yeah. i mean i mean the, the camp's just a huge time to evaluate guys yeah and you, you see how they take coaching um and then they get around our players, which is really beneficial for us in the recruiting process because our players are out there coaching them as well. So We talk a lot about relationships in this, and I think I've made the mistake of even saying to DY off there, oh, this is kind of their first full cycle. But that's, that's not even the case, really, is it? I mean, this, this you only had a year, you know, a year, two months to look at kids. Don't you want to be, you know, maybe two years further out to really look at people down yeah. the line before this is even a full recruiting class for you That's guys? what I was saying. It's, you know, this next class would be yeah. a true blue full coach climbing class right because now we have started on the juniors prior i mean that's so that's when you really get in in it because i mean we were late on some of the guys Mm -hmm. so and yeah like hank said it's all about building that relationship well now we've gotten to do that through the season so it'll be fun to see where we go and of course without naming names we'll get back to 2020 but you look we look ahead to 2021 and from recruiting services, whatever you've already done a nice job in the state of Kansas. Is that perhaps just go uh, cats? Also, you know what you've done having that time, and now these kids really know what this program is. You think? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think that has a yep. lot to do with it. Yeah. I'm not. I don't. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. Yeah, no, there's, 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 there's You're poking the bear a little bit. The answer in the question is a bad question, Derek. Take us back yeah, to good okay. question. No, I want to just say how. how uh, what kind of impact is my McCoy having? Is that huge? Yeah, kids love McCoy. We have a fun time. Me and Mike together is just a good time. He's like, uh, I mean, we do a lot of things together. He came over for Thanksgiving. Uh, me and him went to uh, Pilates together. I got some really good videos from Snapchat from it. But, I mean, Mike's awesome. He does a really good job with the kids. He smiles. He's positive. He loves the program. Uh, it's good to have him around. I got his little article hanging up on my wall over there. I mean, he's important. He's He's very important to me too, personally. So, uh, as a friend and basically family to me. Yeah, he relates to kids so well. It's just something that Taylor and I can't do because we're a little bit older than them. And he uh, uh, maturity wise, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys use, utilize him more on game day visits, it seems too, because he is probably yeah. I mean, plate. yep, and he loves to do yeah. it. He he comes in my office like, "Who we got this weekend? What are we doing? Who what? Are, mm-hmm. You know? I mean, it's awesome to see that." Yeah. You know, and, and he's here during the week too, and we have unofficials. You know, we're having juniors and and sophomores up on campus as well, and he does a great job showing them around and yeah. getting to know the parents and you know selling yeah. the program, selling himself. He does he does a great job. Mm-hmm. He really does. What coach or coach is will will absolutely you know lose their mind when they when they know they got a kid when a kid commits? Is there any explosive coaches when they celebrate when when they when they get one? Besides, obviously, Taylor. Uh, I mean, I think just about all of them, really. Yeah. I mean, there isn't one guy that's not super excited. I mean, it's because that's them building their room. It's yeah. them building their mm-hmm. their position. I mean, every one of them. Uh, I don't know who would be. Yeah. Coach Kleinerman's great. Yeah, Coach Kleinerman, Coach great. Malone, Coach, yep. Coach Ryan. Van's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Coach Kleinman gets pretty excited, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. he gets fired um, up. Coach Klein, obviously, really excited when we signed. Excuse me, when we got Will Howard to commit to us. So 
And that was that was an interesting day, right? Because there was there was a couple that we were kind of waiting on, and Will Howard. Yeah, came. it was a little wild. Yeah, he he, he helped the sting on that one, right? Yeah, no doubt, bit. no question. We had he did help the sting. <laughs> yeah, we saw all those kids throw live, and I mean, Will Will was up there. He was one or yeah. two, you know, just spinning the football right. when we went and saw him live. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk him up or anything. But. <laughs> I'm curious, without naming names, of course. Like how passionate are the arguments behind closed doors for whether or not to offer a kid? Or I mean, can you remember again? I don't want to hear a, a, a name of the kid uh, who didn't get offered, but like, do you remember any really passionate discussions about how what's that like behind closed doors for you guys? I mean, anytime you're evaluating quarterbacks, that's one of the most position important positions on the field. Yeah, that can get because people are going to sick up, you know, stand up for their guys and and sell their guys, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the quarterback coach and the offense coordinator, Coach Klein, making a decision on that. Um, that's probably the, you know, as you're watching guys, you're always reevaluating tape and, and going back, and if you don't like a kid right away, you go back and you look at them, yeah. you know, their senior year or their senior tape, or even in the beginning of their junior year, you don't like them right now, what does it look like at the end of the season? Because um, kids do get better at football. But, yeah. I mean, that the quarterback this year sticks out as yeah. far as – there's campy the evaluation vowels. process yeah. that we took. Yep. Yeah. There's campy vowels, scenery vowels, and I mean, and you see the difference. And I mean, coaches will get passionate over their position. That's what you want, right? Now. So, and then and they'll stand up for the guys they want. So, that's what you always. I mean, that's what you desire to have. Obviously, so. something fans have caught on to was Coach Malone's presence in Houston early, kind of made an impact. Uh, just how strong yeah i mean his connections in texas are huge i mean he's very well known down there i mean and what he's done and who Mm -hmm. i mean all that stuff i mean that helps tremendously and all those kids and coaches all know so i mean he's just building like we said he's building and building and i mean coach white knows a million people down there as well um and then coach clarman's kind of made a dent down there in the in the mansfield area Mm and the waco area yep central Um, texas central texas so it's pretty unique what he was able to do he's never recruited texas right no He's a good recruiter. He is. He just goes <laughs> at it, man. Yeah. He just gets out there and goes. Yeah. I got to ask real quick about the running backs. Both similar size, but maybe not you know similar as far as skill. We were able to see one in person, not Keon. Well, Derek, I saw both both in person. But is it as simple as saying Keon, Keon Mosey is more the speed guy and Deuce Vaughn's more shifty, or is there more to it than that? You know, I think Deuce can do a lot of things. Yeah. You know, play slot, do all this stuff. You know, he's got a great football genetics. I mean, he's, he's – Football's his life, and he cares about it. He's passionate about it. Keon's a track guy who, I mean, he does. He's yeah, got he speed. I mean, he can just go. Yeah, I think and I think they both help each other. Yeah. yeah those camps. Or... They both help each other. And, you know, with the guys that we signed last year, what, we have yeah. three or four in that I mean, class anytime and... you can put dynamic athletes in the backfield, I mean, it doesn't – to us, I mean, size is important. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. I mean, they make up for it. Deuce, number one. With his football intelligence, I think that's a majorly underrated part of his game. I mean, he sets up blocks really well. You see it on film. And then Keon, I mean, he can just flat out fly. I mean, yep. he takes away an angle from anybody. Yep. They're really short, right? Both five foot seven. Is that the shortest mm-hmm. backs in combo you might have signed? I don't know if you know of a guy named uh, Darren oh, Sproles. Really? He's not very tall either. I'm not <laughs> trying to compare him. Not, not real tall. I think yeah. he did. I think he guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> Darren Sproles production there for both of them. Yeah. Does Christian Moore probably fit this offense like a T? Probably another I mean, what, compared to Adam Harder, maybe. Yeah, another fullback that football smart, uh, passionate. I think you know he wanted to get out of California because he loves football so much and knows that this is it's all ball out here, mm-hmm. you know. And he, he helps us with our depth and helps us with the ability to come and learn and play those positions and mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, he's a, he's definitely a system fit as yep. far as you know. We're probably one of three teams in this league are in 22 personnel and he's going to play what we call the U um, which is like a a move tight end similar to like a cowboy back at Oklahoma State um, and he's going to I, he, I think he's going to fit right into that into that position and do a great job there and the last question I have would be something I'm, I also want to ask Coach Kleiman you talk about you have the helmet and pads at camps one kid that wasn't allowed to do that was Carver Willis I think because of High yeah. school rules. Yep. yep. Did, rule. did that make his evaluation in that camp easier to do because you had to look at his feet work probably a little bit more or was it a little bit more complicated? He had to keep his face out of contact. Yeah, <laughs> he was going to – I mean, <laughs> the feet were it pretty was funny. Yeah, it was funny. He actually went, did a couple one-on-ones without pads on, 
and kids obviously took their helmet off, but he didn't have shoulder pads on, and he he stoned a couple of kids without pads. He's such a technician; he does a great job with his feet and sinking his hips, and you know, big athlete, big athlete that can move and run. And um, I, I was great body control. That was probably the thing that stood out to me the most at camp. Um, but he's got a chance. So my lie, I probably do have one more question. Uh, Obviously, you know, not naming names specifically, but is there any other positions you'd like to address in February? <laughs> or you don't have to answer. We're looking for the best All football them, players yeah. out there. Go Cats. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt. We usually wrap this up by saying, uh, tell your friends. So you could either say that for us, Mr. Brat, or you could say Go Cats or whatever you want to do. But say something to end this episode of the KSO Show for us. Tell your friends, tell your spouses, tell your loved ones, Merry Christmas, go Cats.